Welcome to Psychology the Daf. We are in Gemara Psachim, Daf Kuf Tes. You know, there are situations in family life that the needs of consistency and dedication to Torah study clash with the needs and welfare of our children. It is often not easy to know what comes first, because on the one hand, every family matter is urgent. And on the other hand, if every matter is urgent, Torah, Matahe Aleha, the Torah, what will be of her? Any decent human being who also is dedicated to Torah, intense study, grapples with this painful conflict on a daily basis. The Gemara Nomad Beis tells us that throughout the year, Rav Akiva would never end classes early, except on Erev Pesach and Erev Yom Kippur. The reason is, on the eve of Passover, he would stop on account of the children so that they would go to sleep during the day and they would not be tired and be able to participate in the Seder. And on the evening of Yom Kippur, he would stop so that his students would remember to feed their children. Interestingly enough, and I think tellingly enough, this is not left as a task for the women alone to take care of. Now, the mitzvah chinuch on Seder night requires the adults to engage the children in learning about Yitzhak Mitzrayim, about the Exodus story, and to go to great lengths to do so, as described in our Gemara. Therefore, even the universal importance of Torah study is overridden by the requirement of the mitzvah of teaching about the Exodus of Sibri Yitzhak Mitzrayim. And I'm noticing an important idea that may extend beyond Pesach Seder night. Consistent and uninterrupted Torah study is the foundation of religious practice and survival. And therefore, on a public level, Rabbi Akiva would end classes early only these two days a year, none other. On Erev Pesach, children require special attention in regard to their spiritual welfare so they can participate in the Seder. On Erev Yom Kippur, children require special attention in regard to their physical welfare to make sure they eat. While Rabbi Akiva would only disrupt the public study on those two days because of the universal concerns for children's welfare on those days, it is likely that any individual concern of a child's spiritual or physical welfare would take precedence over Torah study. I will conclude with a quote from the Rambam in Hilchas Tamatora Torah, Perek uh, Aleph Halacha Ches, and an observation from my father, Zechorin Avracha. The Rambam says, every man in Israel is obligated to study Torah, to, t- to study Torah, whether he's poor or rich, whether he be physically healthy or ailing, whether he be in full vigor of youth or great age and weakened vitality. Even if he is dependent upon charity and he has to go from door to door begging for his daily bread, even he who has a wife and children to support is obligated to have an appointed time for the study of Torah, both during the day and at night. For it said, You shall meditate on Torah day and night. Now my father observed an interesting order in the Rambam's list of possible excuses to exempt one from Torah study. Presumably, his list goes in order of intensity, right? That is, as he said, the healthy or the ailing, someone who is in full vigor of youth, or someone who is of great age and weak, and even somebody who's dependent upon charity and has to beg door to door. Now, each excuse is followed by an even better one, but no one is exempt. So what is the last excuse on the list? It must be some incredible hardship, a monumental challenge that few could overcome. It must be something that is even harder than being destitute or having physical pain. And what item is that on the list that is so much harder than any other item? even he who has a wife and children to support.